Okay, so I got my post processor sorted out and had a bit of a poke at the first real look at how Rhino Cam 5 access works and, and the setups that it works. It's easier to just show it as a show it as a simulation, I guess. So let's grab all of these through to here. Let's get and simulate. Mm, sorry, having a bit of a fart on here. Simulate. Okay, so essentially so I've set it to its fastest mode. It went in and this is the cutoff curve that ran do an auto save. God damn it, Rhino, why do you need to do that? Bloody piece of shit. Excuse me. Um, so it's gone in, it's run the curve along here, which cut off the excess wax on this side. I haven't cut it off completely, I've just gone in, cut on this side, and while I'm on this side with the uh, with that cutter, I'm just doing the flip up till here. Uh, afterwards, it'll flip to the other side. I'll leave it over here for now. And you should see it flip over in a second to this side. It goes in, chip, chip, cuts that away, comes in to do the flip on this end. get it to simulate any faster than that unfortunately. Ask my beautiful wife for some whiskey. Alright so it's in the B axis at the moment that was with A rotated to 90 degrees this is with A rotated to still on 90 but B is rotated from 0 to 180 so the cutter is now facing B 180 A90 still and we're now going to leave it in this orientation we're going to flip A back up to 0 to cut the top when this is done um, so that'll be the next path So it's gone up there. Now it's going to do the top down path to clear out. You could have, of course, had some other geometry in there, whatever. I don't know. I'm just, just grabbed a model quickly that I could draw in two minutes. Um, it's in cutting the index side panel, whatever might have been in the side panel over there. And I'll cut the other index side panel over there. Uh, it'd be interesting to note those of you that use Rhino Cam. This is just the same parallel finishing, same tool, same everything. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Right. So I've rolled it over now, and now I'm cutting away to get the inside. You're seeing a machine tool collision over here because my tool has been defined only as a front, not as an entire tool. Um, I'm guessing that if I'm going to be doing any of these deep plunges, I want to be getting some of those long reach, uh, three one, uh, those long reach taper cutters with a three one seven edge on it so I don't get um, collisions down here. Um, so that's this side, then it flips to the other side. So it's going across in this direction. So the ring's actually facing down now at about 270 degrees um, in A. Uh, B is still facing 90. B will, uh, sorry, B is facing 180. B will now flip back to zero with A in the same position and then it'll come in to cut the other side. the other side okay, keep going of course when I set this up probably a, a better idea in between setup one would have been just to do a roughing to get rid of most of this most of this guff before going in, maybe a roughing over the entire ring instead of leaving all this material down the bottom. That being said, this is the first ring I'm cutting as a five axis attempt, so and I'm testing a theory that I only figured out in the train on the way home, so bear with me. Um, instead of using its rather complex system of generating um, MCS moves, I've worked a way to use the same plane and just keep rotating it around where I need. Um, and using it as a reference point. 
which seems to go quite quickly. This took about maybe, I don't know, 12, 13 minutes to write the parts because it's all just copy paste. Move the plane, copy paste, move the plane, copy paste, move the plane, copy paste, etc., etc., etc. Um, the hardest part is moving the plane, copy paste, and then see whether the cutter actually got in there or not. The trick, of course, always will be to see if the machine can make the rotations that I'm writing over here. That'll be the real fun. Um, you can tell down here, I didn't actually write a path to come in here and clean this up, but I should have probably written the same path I wrote in the top that was pointing down to cut away the balance of this hollow over here. And then a um, swarf cut just to clean the inside over there. Uh, but I need to bath. I have no more time left tonight to play on this. I'm not, I mean, I'm not playing, I'm, I'm working, of course I'm working. Uh, Alright, the last path, it's on that side. <coughs> and like I said, you can see I definitely need to, if I was going to cut this as an actual job, I'd need to go in there and sort that out, because that's completely uncut. But in terms of the hollowing, the, the five axis part of it, that's all worked, you've got it all cut out, all your surfaces are inside there. Um, I cut this with a very, very rough, um, very rough step over of 0.07. So if anybody's wondering why it looks stripy like that, um, that's about the worst one that can cut. And from there, it just gets better. All right, so that's it. My first one. I'll I'll let it cut air for a while on the mill tomorrow if we get it set up. Cheers, Chris.